Welcome back to the GSMC Golf Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. We're getting right into our second segment, rest of the leaderboard and superlatives from the Travelers. But before we get into all of that, don't forget to, uh, if you do, are enjoying the show, don't forget to use the GSMCpodcast.net tips and donations link. If you want to support the show even more than you guys already do just by watching, it does help us out a lot here at the GSMC Sports Network. Anything does help support us and you know keep us motivated to get more content out for you guys. Uh, but going into our second segment now, talking about the rest of the leaderboard and superlatives from the Travelers, as we do for all these events as we're wrapping them up, we talk about who played the best and what aspects of their game, but before we get into that, we gotta talk about the leaderboard, how it shaped up, and what we saw during the golf tournament, the eighth and final signature event of the year. It was it was a fantastic Sunday, let me tell you, I was, I, en- I thoroughly enjoyed the Sunday. There was a top there was a time on Sunday that there were five guys tied for the lead. I believe it was between Scotty Scheffler, Tom Kim, Tom Hoagie, Patrick Cantlay, and Tony Finau were all tied at the for the lead at one point on the day. Uh, but it was Scotty Scheffler and Tom Kim that just seized it a little bit more than everybody else. Getting up there to a two-stroke lead on the field, those two did for their playoff. It is Scotty Scheffler that won in the playoff. But Tom Kim had a very, very fantastic weekend. He is going to be talked about in the superlative section of this segment a lot here because he he played fantastic. He's only 22 years old. He was going for his fifth or his fourth win on tour. He turned pro in 2018 at the ripe old age of 16 years old. And this guy has been uh, really outstanding. But kind of coming out of nowhere as this year, not having that great of a season. Uh, his best, his best, his best, um, his best event was a tie for fourth at the Canadian Open. Um, not playing well in the uh, in the majors. Tied 30th at the Masters. Tied 26th at the PGA. Tied 26th at the U.S. Open. And not doing too well at the signature events. The Memorial tied for 43rd. The Charles Sh- or the Wells Fargo tied for 47th. The RBC Heritage tied 18th. The uh, Arnold Palmer tied 52nd. Um, the Pebble Beach tied 31st. So this is his first really impressive, um, you know, impressive feat this season. Last year. Uh, had some fantastic uh, play down the stretch, tied second at the Open Championship last year, tied eighth at the U.S. Open. That was his first career top ten at the major. Um, he uh, he also where was where was his wins? Yeah, he win he won his first title at the Wyndham Championship in 2022, and then in 2023 won twice more at um, he won at the Shriners Children's Open. And he won at the... Where else did he win at? I know he won at one more event. Um, I can't find it right now. But anyways, this guy's 22 years old. He's best friends with Scotty Scheffler. And he gave him a run for his money in a signature event where... I mean, I talked about it on Thursday that this was Scotty Scheffler's event. Uh, he this, this golf course plays to Scotty Scheffler's strength perfectly and we saw that play out we did uh but tom kim really kept it close really outplayed scotty scheffler on a lot of you know areas that you expect scotty scheffler to be the best at uh but down the leaderboard tom hoagie also had a fantastic round four he shot eight under to try to make a run at it you had a who was Yes, it's Cameron Young shooting 59 on a Saturday, only the 13th ever sub or only the 13th ever uh, person to break 60 on a PGA Tour event. Very impressive from Cameron Young. Wasn't able to uh, go out there and replicate that success on Sunday, but uh, you don't expect him to. He finished tied for ninth. Uh, Xander Shoffley also had a uh, disappointing Sunday, shooting 70. Uh, he was in the mix. Uh, I think he was around three four or five going into sunday and then falls off to tie for 13th uh but he did play some good golf throughout this weekend some other guys down the leaderboard that were very disappointing jason day will zala who looked uh, just he he looks pretty injured 
Uh, Keegan Bradley at 8 under. Another guy I want to talk about, Michael Thornionson. This guy made his PGA Tour debut. Uh, he got his tour card for finishing first in the PGA Tour U- University uh, leaderboards. <clears throat> And he has his card through 2025. Playing in these signature events, he's taking a full advantage of it. Tied for 39th, 8 under after a pretty bad <clears throat> pretty bad round 1 and a pretty bad round 4, but shooting 64 and 66 in the middle of the weekend. Very impressive for Michael Thorninson on his first uh, PJ Tour event, and it's one of it's a more difficult one. So we'll see what this guy does. Of course, he's going to be in the field for the Rocket Mortgage, Mortgage Classic. That's one name that I'll be looking out for. Neil Shipley, another guy that uh, was an amateur turning pro. Neil Shipley now in his first professional PGA Tour event playing in the Rocket Mortgage Classic. I don't know if that's a pairing, but I saw that they were close in tee times at least because I, I can remember seeing the leaderboard earlier today and they were around each other. So it's going to be interesting to see if those guys are paired up with each other for that one as those guys are very young coming both from college. We'll see how they do. Of course, Neil Shipley winning low amateur at both the Masters and the U.S. Open. We'll see what he's able to do in his first PGA Tour start as a professional where he can actually make some money from it. Uh, but other guys down the leaderboard, see Thigala at 5 under, tied for 48th, not his best weekend. Max Homa tied for 61st, not his best weekend. Jordan Spieth tied for 63rd, not his best weekend. So going into the superlatives after talking about the leaderboard a little bit. Best driver of the weekend comes from a guy in the middle of the pack. It was Victor Hovland, who was first in strokes gained off the tee at 1.4 strokes gained. Second in total uh, driving with 17 in 17th in distance and 8th in, eighth in accuracy. Uh, total driving takes those two puts them into, uh, averages the two of them, and then ranks everybody in the field. And he came in second of that. So he was fantastic with the driver. He was just not able to get it done in the other aspects of his game. But 17th in distance for Victor Hovland is very impressive. And usually when you see him up there in the top 10 in accuracy, when he's hitting fairways, that means he's having a good weekend. He doesn't, he's not able to have the end product. He missed a few putts throughout the weekend, not able to scramble as well as other. <clears throat> so, for uh, Victor Hovland, he is the best driver, but every other aspect of his game was kind of lacking this weekend. So we'll see if he's able to turn it around. I believe he's not in the field for the Rocket Mortgage Classic either. So we'll see uh, him probably next, maybe at the Scott, uh, Genesis Scottish Open, as the next two weekends might have a smaller field. But that means we have more storylines to talk about with these uh, lower ranked guys in the official World Golf Rankings. Uh, best irons for this weekend was Tom Kim. He was first in proximity to hole, first in greens and regulation at 91 plus percent of greens and regulation. Scotty Scheffler was 86 percent. The tour average is like 61. These guys were hitting greens this uh, weekend. I saw Ludwig Oberg being perfect on fairways and greens uh, early in the tournament. So these guys able to hit the greens really well this weekend made it a lot easier of a golf course uh, than usual signature events are, but. Man, this was one fun one to watch. These guys were just sticking it right next to the pin, being able to get to some low scores here. So Tom Kim wins best irons, takes it from Scotty Scheffler, who usually wins it every single t- tour start he has, especially if Scotty Scheffler is winning a event. That usually means that his iron play is fantastic. His iron play was fantastic. 86% of greens and regulation is still so impressive. But Tom Kim, first in proximity to hole, first in greens and regulation, and third in strokes gained on approach. You can't deny that. That is the best irons of the weekend. <clears throat> Best wedges from the weekend, I had Tom Kim again. This guy was playing so fantastic anywhere between the driver and the putter. Uh, He was 6 for 6 on scrambling. He was 100% on scrambling attempts. He didn't have the best strokes gained on... um, He didn't have the best strokes gained around the green because he wasn't around the green that often. 91% on greens in regulation. And every time he missed the greens in regulation, he got up and down. This guy was fantastic this weekend. I mean, how did he not win? These stati- these stats really prove that he should have, but Scotty Scheffler is just a different beast sometimes. The best putter goes to Patrick Rogers with 1.551 uh, in putting in putts on average per hole, and he was also first in strokes gained on in strokes gained putting at 1.647. Most surprising, Tom Kim. Uh, 
he, as I mentioned, he kind of came from nowhere this year, uh, not being above, besides that Canadian Open, not being above a 24. Uh, he has one seventeenth at the Waste Management Phoenix Open, um, but other than that, 24, 26, 18, 30, uh, 24, 31, uh, he doesn't he doesn't miss cuts, but he doesn't go to the top of the leaderboard. And he got into a playoff to try to get to a championship on one hole here. Very impressive from Tom Kim. That is the most surprising guy this weekend. The most disappointing guy from the weekend was Ludwig Olber. Ludwig, I had as one of the contenders. I truly thought that this was going to be a tournament that he was going to turn turn up in. Uh, I think I predicted him at like third or fourth here. Uh, I thought that this course played so well to his strength. Uh, but this guy finished tied for 27th, 11 under, um, had a 62 in round three to kind of try to make a run at it, but not a good enough, I mean, pretty much other three days, 67, 69, and 71 in those other three days, respectively. <clears throat> Makes this guy the most disappointing in the field on the weekend. So that'll wrap it up for the rest of the leaderboard and superlatives in this second segment. Victor Hovland, best driver. Tom Kim, best irons and wedges. And best putter goes to Patrick Rogers with the most surprising being Tom Kim. And most disappointing being Ludwig Oberg with honorable mentions and the most disappointing to Jordan Spieth and Max Homa. So that'll wrap it up for this second segment of the night. Next, we'll be talking about Live Golf Nashville. We'll be reviewing that, talking about the crowds that it draw, drew in and what the, you know, where Live Golf is at right now uh, with their biggest star kind of turning provider for them.